All right, so for this first view, we're gonna play it all the way through. This is a lead hook, kind of this aerial view, uh, which is great for show showing a couple of things I wanna make sure you notice. Uh, and then we're gonna go through it and then we'll play it all the way through again. Okay, so lead hook. Okay, we'll come all the way back. The first thing we're gonna start with is just this idea of the kinetic chain. Okay, so whenever he starts to step forward off of his back leg, you can follow a lot of the movement all the way through his arm. And this is what people are talking about when they talk about starting the kinetic chain from the ground and why you, how you get so much more force from the ground as opposed to if you're in the air. So we've got plantar flexion, plantar flexion, knee extension, hip extension, along with the lumbo-pelvic rotation as we move up the spine and thoraco, or excuse me, thoracolumbar and then just thoracic rotation in general. So now we're from the foot, we're all the way up to the thoracic spine once his thoracic spine has rotated as far as it's gonna rotate, you can see how as far as arm lags behind, we'll talk about that in a second, and then it makes contact in his face as his weight starts to shift over to the other leg. But that's how we kind of track the kinetic chain all the way up the body from the ground to when the strike stops, or when the strike stops on the face. The next thing we're gonna look at is what we've talked about several times before in this hip and shoulder dissociation is very easy to see it from this aerial view. So when he steps forward, look at what his hips does first or what his hips do first. So they stay, his hips are facing straight ahead. But if you were to draw a line, we're gonna put that line here on the, if you were to draw a line here in between the two hip bones, in between the two femoral heads, and then a line across the two acromion processes at the shoulder, you can see how there's a separation of the two planes. Okay, that seems to be important whenever, it, whenever we talk about throwing strikes, particularly like the hook or something in the rotational plane, because he's rotating across a vertical axis, being the spine, in the transverse plane. So when we back up, we've got that nice hip and shoulder separation, which allows him to take advantage of the third thing which is the stretch reflex, which we've talked about also in many of the other breakdowns that we've done up until this point. So muscles like the external oblique on the side of the hand that's striking and the internal oblique of the opposite side are put on a massive stretch along with the muscles of the shoulder like the anterior delt and the pec major that horizontally adduct the shoulder to throw the punch. So the stretch reflex is a, an elongation of those muscles eccentrically, followed by a really rapid change from eccentric to concentric called the amortization phase, which happens somewhere around here. And then those muscles contract concentrically to finish the strike. So all things that Julian Jackson are doing at the same time, there's really no loss of energy in this punch, uh, which makes it all that more impressive. Plus he's very long and I tend to, I tend to think, this is just a personal opinion that folks that are a little bit longer um, and athletic just have the propensity to, or the at least the capacity, the potential to generate a lot more force than a lot of us shorter, stockier guys. All right, so all the way through, one more time. Off the ground, boom. Really powerful. I'm starting to run into a problem where I have more questions than I can answer, pertaining to injury advice, biomechanics, anatomy, etc., which is a good problem to have. Up until this point, I've answered almost all of your messages. However, I'm still doing this part-time and seeing patients, so I'm running out of time during the day. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop answering questions on my Instagram DMs and my email. So if you have questions for me, I've created a Patreon account. There's only one tier, which is set at $5 a month. So if you just wanna generally support or you wanna be a part of the only place that I'll be answering questions, consider checking out my Patreon. Now back to the breakdown. All right, so the second clip is against Norris. We're gonna watch it all the way through again, and then we'll start to break down. So we're looking at a right, a left, and an uppercut. So like a, eh, almost an uppercut. It kind of an uppercut, and we'll see why I say that in a second. So the right hook that starts this, pay attention to the front of his hips. Okay, it's gonna tell us a lot about how he's transferring energy all the way through that kinetic chain again. So hips go from facing us to facing his opponent, still has, even though he's shifted a lot of his weight to the front, he's still maintaining that ground contact, which helps with that transfer delivery of energy up through the 
kinetic chain. Another thing that I want you to notice is look how far back this shoulder is. Uh, on the other view, we saw it a little bit better uh, just because we were at a different angle from the top, but the other shoulder, the left shoulder, actually follows along with his hips. So watch this shoulder here. It's very, the, the ties do this whenever they're throwing roundhouse kicks. That arm is used to gather momentum and help with that whipping motion, bringing it around, or bringing the throwing hand around to land the punch. You see the stretch reflex here again. So as the hips in the left shoulder rotate, the right shoulder lags back. So the pec major in the anterior delt and the external oblique on the, opposite, on the same side of the throwing arm and then the opposite side, internal oblique, are on stretch here and then they contract centrically, concentrically to land right on the button. He does it again here very quickly because he knows he's got him stunned. Hip, watch here, the wide of his shorts again. It goes from facing him to facing us really quickly. Same thing, this shoulder moves along with the hips, the other one lags behind, lands again, and then as he does the uppercut, right, so it's all the same biomechanical principle just at a different angle. Okay, so he is getting, he's extending his hip and performing a, a movement called lumbopelvic or left rotation. So he's extending and rotating that glute max and the hamstrings are, are really heavily involved here. Not only that, his erector spinae all the way from the lumbosacral spine to the cervical spine are helping extend his spine, getting the center of mass moving upward so that whenever his arm, now pay attention to the arm, is in relative shoulder extension, muscles like the anterior delt, and this time the bicep. Now the pec major, the upper clavicular fibers, particularly the pec major, do play a role in shoulder flexion, but Anterior delt and bicep are much more at play here. Eccentric to concentric, okay? So eccentric, concentric contraction, and that puts him on the canvas. Really good. So really quick, hip shift, shoulder legs behind, land. Hip shift, shoulder legs behind, land. Hip shift. Shoulder legs behind at a different angle this time, but the same principles apply, and it lands. Good. So all the way back, and we're gonna watch the whole thing again. Super fast, super powerful. No stopping that. All right, and the final clip we're gonna watch is against Graham. Uh, Graham was a, a at this point hadn't been knocked down, I believe. I, I've gotta admit my boxing history is, is not as good as like the MMA UFC history, but I think Graham up until this point hadn't been knocked down or finished. So maybe, maybe he had been knocked down, but I, I think definitely not finished. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But as he's got him boxed in, he's kind of physically restrained. So he can't take that, that general kind of bladed boxing stance that he likes to take. Uh, and he's gotta do something else in order to counter kind of this blitz that Graham's throwing at him. So what does he do? He uses his upper body, so thoracolumbar left, right, uh, left side bending and rotation. Okay, so he dives his spine and kind of flexes his trunk down to the side in order to get that nice whip effect that we've seen already. Now, this is something I really want you to appreciate because not only is this lagging behind so far, you can actually see the outline of the muscles that are doing some work here. So this is a scapular, it's really scapular adduction, but typically we just call it globally retraction. Uh, the muscles like the upper trap and the, mid, the upper and middle trap, you can actually see here, if you were to kind of splay those away, you would also see the rhomboids. And then you can see the outline of the posterior delt. And if you can see the outline of the posterior delt that's really contracted, you know the anterior delt on the other side uh, of the, the antagonist muscles, if you will, are in fully elongated. And so they've finished that eccentric contraction and now they're switching from that amortization phase and getting a really big whipping effect concentrically to land perfectly. And the very last thing that we're gonna watch, and I want you to watch very closely, I wanna try to do it a little slow, I want you to watch his head, because it looks like he just punches him and his head kind of stays in the same place. He kind of ends up in like left rotation. But if you watch really close, 
he actually goes into right cervical rotation and he hits him so hard that he goes into the maximum amount of right cervical rotation that he could possibly go into and it whiplashes out into left cervical rotation and then he just falls completely unconscious. So that just goes to show that what we think may cause the acute loss of consciousness like this, uh, that really rapid axonal stretching as a result from a quick rotational force being put on the neck uh, can lead to that phenomenon like mechanoporation that we talk about in the video that I've done in the past uh, to that acute loss of consciousness. So just really, really powerful throat that lands almost perfectly hardcore whiplash out of from right cervical rotation to left cervical rotation and it just <laughs> it just puts them right on the canvas okay so watch really closely this is really fast but i want you to watch it all the way through <laughs> unreal 